Hello, I'm Designer Dave, and I wanted to talk a little bit about why the release of the Half-Life 2 Episode 3 text, uh, or story overview, or what do you want to call it? Plot? Summary? It really means absolutely nothing. So if you don't know, I am a game developer. I've worked in the game industry for over 18 years, and the reason that I come to this conclusion is that there's three main reasons, so let's go over them. Uh, first of all, this was written many years ago, and nothing will ever change a concept quite as much as time will change a concept. So when he originally came up with uh, this plotline, and maybe it even got approved by the dev team at some point, um, it it's five years later, at least, right? And that means that whatever things they accepted at that point no longer are necessarily true. So that storyline would have been completely changed by now. Um, number two, he's no longer at the studio. And if you've ever worked in any creative industry, I can tell you that the first thing that a new person coming in to work on something that an older person who left did is they're going to change it. <laughs> they're going to completely change it and make it their own. And it's going to be like that old person's stuff was never there to begin with. Um, I mean, that's not always true, but I can say pretty soundly that the majority of new creatives who come in, the first thing they're going to do is change all the things they didn't like that the old creative did. And that's true for writing, that's true for game design, that's true for level design, that's true even for programming, like just the way code is laid out and things like that. I, everyone wants to get in their own personal stamp and, and make sure make it their own. Guaranteed that if a new writer ever came into Valve or there was someone at Valve who, who took up the writing mantle, um, they're going to change all that. <laughs> they're gonna, definitely going to change it. Uh, number three. Uh, it was his take on the plot line for episode three, and it had not gone through the input stage from other designers and level designers and potentially other writers yet. Uh, and if there's anything I can tell you about game dev uh, and how game dev writing works, everyone gives feedback, things change many times over, it's an iterative process, and the final product is pretty much never what was originally intended. Um, and the larger the studio is, the more likely that is to be true. So at EA, I can almost guarantee you that anything that comes in from a writer will leave with a producer shitting on it. It might not be true at Valve in particular, but in general, this is what I've experienced in the game industry at a multitude of companies. So take it with a grain of salt, but um, there's no reason to think that anything in this episode three storyline that he released has anything to do with what might come out as Half-Life 2 Episode 3, but seriously, who's going to release Half-Life 2 Episode 3 this many years after the release of Half-Life 2? It makes no sense whatsoever to, to do that at this stage, because it's an old, old engine. I, I mean, I know that TF2 runs on it and everything, but, oh, geez, they really... It would be a waste of everyone's time at Valve to release Episode 3 at this point, and I think they know that, and I think that even we, the users, sort of fundamentally know that without necessarily understanding. <laughs> Here's what would happen if they released Episode 3 now. Everyone would go back, reinstall Half-Life 2, and then they'd experience the Half-Life 2 engine with the modern perspective of what all the new game engines have been able to do recently, even on consoles, they're gonna, it's gonna blow Half-Life 2 out of the water in terms of uh, just general look and feel. There's nostalgia at work that people don't realize how old games, um, it, you remember them a certain way, but your memory covers up all the flaws. And when you actually go back and play that game, it looks terrible, it feels terrible, and you hate it. <laughs> so the, the reason, that you know blizzard did starcraft remastered is because starcraft was still being broadcast on television in korea because it was people liked it better than starcraft 2 in terms of gameplay but it looked like shit it looked like shit on high def te televisions because it it was so old so they updated it and now it looks great like i, I did a vid video recently you should check that one out i'll link it at the end um and starcraft remastered it's y you play it and you don't notice how good it looks because you don't remember how bad it used to look unless you like hit the key to switch and then you're like oh wow this is actually 
<laughs> so the the last point I'd like to make is that um, because writing and creative processes are iterative and because uh, a any amount of time will cause either decay of those ideas or will cause new ideas to become perceived as better, the story will always change. And so uh, I'll give you an example of something I did. Before I left uh, Blizzard, I had done a draft of for Diablo 3 for the storyline. And uh, because the NDA ran out and because Diablo 3 is released, it's uh, I've put it up on my old blog on Gamer Hate. I'll put a link down below. And you can read through it. It has literally nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. Nothing from that is in Diablo 3. I, or, I think Tyriel's in it. That's about it. Uh, so you can read that for fun. It's quite long. I don't think it's good. Uh, but then I don't remember it all that clearly, so <laughs> maybe it is. Uh, but you can check that out for a little bit of uh, history and why I know that absolutely nothing from uh, Mark, Mark uh, Laidlaw's uh, episode 3 will be in an episode 3 for Half-Life 2, which I don't think will ever come out anyways for the previously stated reasons. I do have friends who work at Valve. Um, I barely talk to them. I haven't talked to many of them in years, so uh, I, lo I know nothing. I literally know nothing. So this is not insider info. This is just a game dev perspective on that situation. Um, so if you uh, like this video, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, if you go to my Patreon process for creating your own board game, uh, and this is a first step in a learning process to learn game design and how to design for video games. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please go to my Patreon, sign up uh, there, and design your day wisely, and I'll see you later.